Uh, as you know, this is my 2007 Ford Taurus project car. Still has a lot of work to do to it. But due to the fact that a lot of people was asking about the car and what I'm doing to it and what I plan on doing to it, I decided to make a, a video about the, the top five modifications to do it on this car. And since there is no aftermarket support for this type of body style or this generation, I decided to uh, tell, tell you my take on what to do to this car for looks and maybe performance. So uh, let's start with the cheapest and work our way up. Now this is not in any particular order. This is just my thoughts on what to do to this car to improve it. It may not be the same as yours, but I'm going to stick to five things to do. So let's start. Now the first thing I recommend is the Mach 1 lip for the 1999 to 2004 Mustang Mach 1 and Cobra. Now this is uh, something that is not for the Taurus. It's not made for the Taurus, but it actually fits, as you can see right here. And it cleans up the look of the front bumper. The only thing you got to do is uh, measure, drill a few holes, and use the mounting hardware to mount it to the bumper. And the best part about this is you can get one of these for $40 or less online like eBay or through Amazon. Or you can go to American Muscle and get one of theirs for like 60 bucks. But it's actually pretty cheap and a quick little uh, upgrade to the looks of the car. Number two is wheels and tires. Now, uh, you could actually go too far with the size of the wheels and tires and end up ruining the look of the car, in my opinion. I'm not a fan of the super size 20 something and 30 something inch wheels that you gotta jack the car up, ruin the suspension and the droppability of the car to put on a wheel that you would just bend up as soon as you hit a small pothole. So, uh, now the front wheel is a 225 50R17. This will, this is a, an upgrade one size up from the 16s that was already on the car. And I think this is the best compromise of wheel size and drivability. Uh, the wheel itself uses the stock backspacing, so there's no interference when you turn the wheel. Nothing rubs. And uh, I think if you're going to start with a, a wheel size upgrade, go up to a 17. You can go up to an 18 if you want, but that will be like the largest, in my opinion, to go. And this is my back wheel. It's actually a size bigger. It's on an 18-inch wheel, stock back spacing, with a 245, 45 R18 tire. Now this is the largest I think you should go. Um, anything larger than that, you have to use a real low profile tire and risk uh, road rashing your wheel or bending it, hitting potholes and whatever, and your ride is going to take a big hit. But uh, uh, the reason why I went with a 17 in the front, 18 in the back is I'm going to be racing this car at the drag strip, and the 17 in the front has more tire options. And since we're talking about wheels and tires, let's talk about the next thing, number three, suspension. Now, most of these cars, when you get them, they're going to be worn out. They're going to have miles on them. So they're either going to have the back end sagging or the car's going to sit like it's a 4x4. To fix that, I went with the cheapest uh, fix, and that is lowering springs and new struts. Uh, the lowering springs I got on the car right now is from King Springs. It lowers the front and back one and a half inches. It's a progressive string, spring. So uh, they uh, stiffen up the harder you drive it, uh, the harder you turn corners. And I think 
one and a half inches is more than enough for this kind of car. You still got to drive it. And I have no issues going over uh, pothole, I mean, um, over uh, speed bumps or anything like that. So let's take a closer look at the wheel gap on them. And I'll show you uh, what to expect if you put these on your car. Now this is the front wheel. Sorry about everything being dirty. Uh, I used to stick four fingers in there before I was before I switched to springs, and now I can get two fingers in there. So I did. It actually took almost two inches off the height, and the gap looks way better. Let's look at the back. And this is the rear wheel. It is sitting, I can stick half a finger in there. Now the best part about this is I used to stock uh, backspacing when I bought the wheels. And I didn't go crazy on the tire size. So there's no interference even when there's people sitting in the back seat. There's no rubbing on the inside of the wheel well or anything. So uh, basically if you're going to go with this route of lowering your car, Make sure you get the right spacing on your wheels and the right size tires, and you'll have no problem. But uh, I think this really improved the overall look of the car just by simply lowering it an inch and a half. Now we have uh, a lowering spring, uh, and we also had coilovers. But they stopped making lowering springs and coilovers for this particular year. So if you're going to be looking for one, for your car to lower it, go for a uh, 96 to 2000 Ford Taurus and use their lowering kits because they use the exact same suspension and it will fit. No modifications needed, but uh, the plus part about the fourth gen is when you put their suspension parts on your car, you'll end up getting about a quarter of an inch to a half inch more lowering out of the out of the car compared to putting it on the 99 to uh, 95 models so let's get to the next um, part or, next, or the next mod I want that you should do on the fourth gen okay number four uh, I really enjoyed this one because the car never came with them and that's uh, ex ex auxiliary driving lights now the car, they stopped having driving lights on the cars uh, in 2000 when it went to the 4th gen and they brought them back after the car uh, changed uh, body styles in 2008. Now you might have a problem trying to find a location for them but I found a nice location right behind the grill you can actually see it. And it ended up turning out pretty good. But uh, it come in really handy on those dark nights when these lights are not bright enough. So, uh, like I said, driving lights. And finally, number five in my favorite mod, the exhaust. Now, I've been through uh, about five exhaust systems. And I found out on this particular car... It is hard to make the car sound at least decent without it sounding like a ricer. But I think I finally got it. Uh, now you can go with a muffler behind, replace the muffler behind the, uh, the uh, back. And maybe a high flow resonator or something like that. But I thought this version of the exhaust on my car is the best. Now what I did was I took to the muffler shop and had to fabricate a whole new system. As you can see, under there, right after the catalytic converter, I ran a bullet style muffler and it runs the stock location to the back over the driver's side axle and out the back. But I put a wide pipe and had to split out the two tailpipes like the old uh, SHOs. Now, in this case, I'm supercharging the car, so I went with a three-inch exhaust. 
all the way to the back and it splits the two and a half inch tailpipes in the back over the axle. But you can use the factory size of a two and a quarter and run any bullet style muffler depending on how loud you want it. And that's the best part about this version of an exhaust system is uh, you can pick whatever muffler, bullet muffler you want right there. And um, you can keep it mild or in my case, I went with the Jones flow pack muffler so it is loud but it goes with the engine work I did to it um, and if you want to uh, do something about the drone because this car does drone you can actually fix that with this simple fix you see in the back I have a dual tailpipes now if you want to deal with drone and don't want as much get resonated tips these are not resonated because I don't have an issue with the car droning and it does drone. I actually like the way it sounds so I don't want to put any tips on it. But if you want to cut down any drone, put resonated tips and you're good to go. And that is my five mods I would do to the fourth gen for Taurus. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, give me a like and if you haven't already, Subscribe by hitting the bell button and I really appreciate it and right now it's time for a cold start